All right, so today we are in the back. So this is the back bedroom. Um, today we're thinking about installing an air conditioner um, in the back here. And the reason for that is we have a mini split that we run to cool the bus and we love that thing. It's actually running right now. Um, it's super efficient. Uh, during the day, it uses all, it just uses solar and so it doesn't even use up our battery. Um, it's extremely efficient. However, it is in the front and there will be two doors between this rear bedroom and the front and we thought if we're back here in Arizona or somewhere where it's really humid it would be nice to have an additional air conditioner that just this is the area where the kids are gonna sleep and so we thought most of the time we won't run it but if we need it we can put an air conditioner back here and just have the rear um, air conditioned and so um, our plan wasn't that at first it was just like we thought maybe that one might be enough but once we got into summer we realized um, there's with this closed off there's it's probably not gonna be enough just with the mini split and so um, we sort of were looking at options of how are we gonna air condition back here and last Christmas I believe I was walking around in Target and um, on the end cap they had air conditioners on clearance and so um, by clearance I mean they were um, $30 I think is what I bought the air conditioner for and so I called an associate over and I said hey this is $30 like are these broken or is there something wrong with the air conditioners and she said no they're just on clearance I think they had a couple of them and um, and she said you know it's winter and we're just trying to get rid of them and so I bought I looked it up on Amazon and they're normally like I think $150 um, so I I bought one thinking well we probably want to air condition back here we just haven't figured any of that out and so they are relatively efficient um, here this is it right here um, it's a hair air conditioner and it's a pretty basic unit but they are um, pretty efficient so this one draws about three amps at 120 which um, is not a ton it's only 5,000 BTU which for this little bedroom should be more than enough to cool it down um, so we are thinking about putting it in this area back here we've already kind of drawn a square um, our bus has a fiberglass cap on the back and so the window really tilts like this and you can see that tilt but the fiberglass cap goes almost perfectly straight up and down and so there's room here for us to cut into that cap and stick out the back just a little bit and so the back of the unit will will sit right inside the fiberglass and then we'll cut holes in the fiberglass and we have some nice kind of stainless um, grill covers so it, does, it won't look like the back of an air conditioner sticking out the back it'll just it'll have a couple of of uh, nice stainless steel covers and so with these air conditioners the key is um, the hot goes out the back and then you need cool air coming in from the sides and the top and the bottom and then the hot air pushes out the back so you need to isolate the back of the unit from the sides and the top and so we'll be kind of be using the end caps and all that to accomplish that so when we build this out what we were planning is just to build a wall kind of straight up from from this bench thing and so this area back here would be um, mostly wasted space we'll, we will do a few cubbies and things like that in here but this area will mostly just be um, just insulated all up so anyway um, that's the plan for today we're gonna try to to cut it out and see what we discover so two things we have to consider are one we have to isolate the rear of the unit where the hot air comes out um, from the sides and the other is there's a drain um, where water when 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 it dries the air water needs to go somewhere and so we'll have to run a drain pipe um, kind of outside and so those are the two things we're going to be considered we already cut a piece of wood um, to fit in here and so we're already kind of playing with how is that all gonna go? So that's that's the project for today. So our bus has a fiberglass uh, cap on the back. So when it was originally a bus in service, this whole thing would have been a window. 
and those windows that you just can't find them anymore and so what people do is they they cover them with metal which is what's done here and what it is is the window will tilt in towards the bus and then there's a little scoop on the top so it goes in and then up and over like that and what people do is just replace that whole thing with with a fiberglass cap and that's what's been done to ours um so where the window tilts in the fiberglass cap is almost straight up and down and so there's there's about we measured and there's about three inches of space between the cap and this um, this metal sheet that they replaced um, the rear glass with all right so we love our mini split but it only has um, one head unit and so there are units that have two head units and that may have been more ideal but um, the only ones we could find that did that were in 240 volts and we chose to run 120 volts on purpose in this bus just to keep things a little more simple and so um, that wasn't really an option for us all right so this is kind of how it would fit in here um, this isn't exactly how it would fit in because it's going to go about three inches back which would which should put it right in line with the back kind of wall that we're going to construct and so you can see here we've already marked where we're going to cut it um, and this is how it would fit. All right, so this is how it fits in. We've cut the hole now, and essentially the back of the unit is sticking out through this metal piece um, and almost right up against the fiberglass cap. And so um, before we get too far into building it all around and things like that, we're gonna try to address the, um, the water drain. And so we don't get a mess of water in here. Um, they make these little drain things that, um, it's just like a little hose outlet that comes out and then we're gonna run a small hose and just run it to the outside basically. So um, we have to drill a hole in the cap and bring that through and then a hole through this um, piece of plywood, but um, it should be pretty straightforward. At least that's what we're hoping. All right, so down in here we can see where we've mounted the top part of our video camera. So the cool thing is we can now use that as a reference outside and put the drain hole. Um, we're thinking about three inches over and about two inches up. So it should hit right about here. So that should give us enough room for the hose to make nice big sweeping um, things so we don't get a kink in the hose. All right, so here's our little hole. We're gonna, we drilled a small hole in case it was bad. We could just like put a rivet in there, but um, I guess we'll drill it out bigger and then um, we're going to be using some grommets so that the hose um, A is held in place. So these are just slightly smaller than the diameter of the hose so that it's held in place and also so that it, um, uh, it kind of seals around the hose so the hose will stick out so we can't, so we don't get water in behind. Uh, the little hole. It's got to be a 7 eighths inch hole, and so it's quite large. So, anyway, we're going to give it a go, see how it goes. All right, so we ended up having to use a, a reinforced uh, drain hose because we had put our drain off kind of a little bit off to the side because we didn't want water just dripping on the backup camera. So um, the bend that we had to put in it was a little bit too much for just like the standard vinyl tubing. And so we went and bought this reinforced tubing, which is a little bit beefier, and it handles the curves a lot better. So hopefully this will work out. Um, 
So we've got a little rubber grommet in there now and we've um, kind of poked it through the back. So now we're ready to insulate this back piece and um, get this thing installed. All right, so to fit, um, this doesn't come with a drain tube. It kind of comes with a little hole where it drains out of. And uh, in order to get that to work, we're gonna use this little thing here that we just bought on Amazon. Um, we needed one that kind of elbowed right away so we could go towards the back of the unit. And so this hole is a little too small for this drain plug, so we're gonna have to drill it out just a tiny little bit, and hopefully we can get that to fit. So if we can't get that to fit, then we're gonna have to think of something else, but hopefully we'll be able to get that in there. All right, well, it turns out, <laughs> because this is recessed in a hole the way it is, it's kind of concave in there. Um, this will not fit with the rubber thing on it. So what we're gonna try to do is use some of the 5200 as a seal to try to glue this in place as well as seal it and then just kind of shove it in there. <laughs> so again with the plan B's. So we're gonna try this and see if it works. We're gonna let it set up and then, so we're gonna put a bunch of glue around here and seal it in there and then seal all the glue in there. So, um, that should work. So we're going to give it a try. All right, because the drain thing sticks down lower than the actual, the bottom of the AC, it kind of sticks down. We're going to have to cut kind of a hole in this back plate that we cut to fit in the area that makes the shelf right above that bench. Um, so that it has enough room to go down and then it needs to slide because it needs to slide back three inches. So we're gonna try to make this hole big enough where we can fit it and then slide it back and it, it would still be okay. So anyway, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. All right, so now that we've got the drain hose figured out, um, we need to exhaust. So air comes in the sides and comes out of here. And so we bought these um, three of these little vents um, so that the air can come out the back. So out the back, all that'll show is this little, you know, stainless um, louvered vents. And um, the hot air will basically come out and it'll just, come out of these vents. So we have three of these for the exhaust and then we've got two um, on the sides for the intake. So. All right, so here's the template in place. Um, these squares represent just where the louvered parts are. So we're gonna trace around those and that will be where the, the little vents sit. And so there's a little bit of space between the two. So we also have a piece of um, just bug screen that we were thinking about putting on the inside just so you know we don't get a bunch of bugs or anything in here so anyway all right we've got them marked out and we had to cut this a little bigger because this raised up um, we put insulation under here so we're about to try to cut these I'm gonna try to cut it with the angle grinder and see how that goes All right, so to install the little louvered um, vents, we have a bug screen that's gonna go on the inside. And then these aluminum plates 
are going to work like large washers against the back. So we'll have one eighth inch um, rivets that will go through the whole thing and just kind of sandwich it all to together. And so this it'll sandwich the screens in and um, the plates and everything together. And so it should all hold nice and tight. So um, we'll also be using a little bit of um, sealant. So we'll use a little bit of sealant all the way around just to make sure water doesn't get in behind the plate um, when it's mounted up there. So So we've got the first vent just clecoed in so that we can align the other two vents. I'm about to cleco the top, okay? Okay? Yeah. Alright. You want to do one in the bottom? Yep. Ready? Yep. Okay, that's in. All right, so we've put sealant. So this is the Trem Pro. Um, we put sealant all around so when it, when it mounts up, we won't have to worry about it getting behind the actual plate. So um, we'll go ahead and mount this up and Cleco it in and then start to rivet it in. All right, so we're continuing um, to install this air conditioner in the back. So last time we had put the drain hole, we had bought this little guy on Amazon, and we couldn't use the rubber because this drain was inset um, a little bit like these things are. So it was kind of like in, and so the rubber part wouldn't fit. Well, that was an issue <laughs> because then it wouldn't click right. So what we decided to do was glue it in. So we put a bunch of 5200 on it and just glued it in there. And then we thought, then the next day when we went to go hook it all in, it turns out that the, the glue kind of broke loose. And we thought, oh, we didn't wait long enough or, you know, something happened, didn't cure. And so last week, before we went to go put the bus away, we re-glued it back in. And this time we used even more glue. So we made sure that it was... The, the little divot was full of glue and we stuck it in there and just left it for four or five days. And the problem is the glue just does not stick at all to this plastic. It like literally we, um, we tested it for water tightness um, again and it, we noticed it was just kind of loose. And the problem is the glue stuck great to the metal and it made like a little washer basically because it's kind of, it's a little bit rubbery. And um, that part was great, but then anywhere where the plastic was, it just leaked out. So it ended up not working out. So we did what we should have done in the first place, which was cover that hole up. And there's actually like a little um, piece here that goes down and, kind of goes down further like you would expect the drain to be and so we drilled into there and then put this guy into there and then that would allow us to use um, the rubber piece that is that came with it that's supposed to seal it so now it's in there good and tight and it's not coming out and we've sealed that one again we just took a little piece of aluminum glued a bunch of glue on it and stuck it on there. So now we're gonna have to wait another few days to water test it again, but we're more, we feel better about this. This actually feels a lot more secure. Um, that also means we had to modify our wood template, which we had already installed and already had fit and everything. So we've recut it and refit it. And then hopefully in the next couple days, we'll be able to water test it and get it in there. That is, we've started kind of making these templates which will kind of make the, a little duct here um, which will force all the air through that little vent that we put in last week and so we're getting paper now and just kind of making rough 
templates and then we'll go back through and refine them a little bit until we get this whole thing to be one tunnel that sort of just shoots the air out the back. All right, so on the back of these, um, so this is bent also, so that it gives us a nice big area to either glue or to um, put VHB tape or something to keep it kind of back against the back wall. And so it fits in like that, and then it'll just here, and then we'll rivet it to the front here, and it should make a nice little channel. All right, so we're continuing work on our little vent thing. So <clears throat> what we've done is this is the top piece and we've made lips around the side to kind of hold the air in the sides as well. <clears throat> and this goes in here. And then what this will do is it will, so this is the driver one, so it'll go on this side. It'll go on the inside of that so that it makes a corner like that. Conversely, on the other side, it'll do the same thing over here, kind of like that. So. The way we put this in is you just kind of maneuver it in there, kind of get it centered a little bit, and then we'll put our passenger side one in. And so these will rivet in, and um, <clears throat> so you can see how it'll make like a tunnel. Here, it'll probably be easier if I do it on this side. So we put this guy in here, and then he just kind of slides in there like that. And so you can see how it makes a little tunnel and then we can seal these little gaps. Right, so we put a little bit of glue on the edge and so now we'll just rest it up in there. I'll try my best to get it in there. Don't make it too much of a mess. All right, there we go. So that should stick along the back. Okay, so this is the final piece for the bottom. It ended up being pretty crazy. Um, we ended up having to make it out of two pieces because it was too long and then we just kind of riveted them together. So anyway, um, it slides right in just like that. And then these, will get uh, riveted to here. So we didn't put any rivets on the bottom for that very reason. All right, so we think we're almost done. So you can see how it uh, goes all the way around. All right, so we finished the exhaust port mostly um, all on the inside and the outside. So we're gonna start drilling a couple of intake ports and these are gonna just be off to the sides and um, just away from this kind of being a heat source. So we're gonna try to push them. This one's gonna sit right in between the ladder and then that one's gonna be an equal distance away in that direction. So hopefully we'll be able to draw in some nice cool air through there. Ready? Yeah. All right, well, we've got this side installed and it installed a little nicer since it was our second one than the other one. So um, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So we'll have two air intakes from either side and then the middle uh, exhausting the hot side. So um, we'll work on that side next. All right, so we've got our little drain hose guy here. Um, right above and to the left of the camera, so hopefully it'll, you know, when it drips out water, it'll come out here instead of on the camera. Um, so we've got our vents in, and I think we're all done on the outside. 
Yep, it's blowing nice and cold. Um, we looked on our on our meter and it's pulling about 400 and about 410 watts or so at its absolute highest settings. So um, so that's pretty good. <laughs> so our total load right now we're running three air conditioners. It's 90 degrees in Arizona, and we're pulling about 1500 watts um, out of our battery, so to speak, and then we're bringing in about 1700 watts of solar. So our battery's really just kind of floating along.